Bleeding Kansas, also referred to in history as Bloody Kansas, was a sequence of violent events that took place between free staters, or rather anti-slaveryites, and pro-slaveryites, also called border refugees. These spiraling incidences took place in the Kansas-Nebraska Territory, in addition to the western frontier lands of Missouri. The term Bleeding Kansas was conceived by the New York Tribune's Horace Greeley. These violent clashes would soon hint towards the American Civil War. Kansas was established as a result of the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, which, in addition to contradicting and nullifying the Missouri Compromise, also promoted the concept of popular sovereignty. Despite support by many prominent figures such as Stephen A. Douglas, popular sovereignty faced unwelcoming hands in the form of many abolitionists. Derived from Senator Lewis Cass, popular sovereignty was an attempt to offer concessions to southern states through the expansion of slavery through western and northern territories. Under its shadow, the decision of making Kansas and Nebraska a free slave or a slave state remained under the hands of each's respective inhabitants. As a result, it was expected that free slave advocates would take Nebraska, whereas pro-slavery Southerners would occupy Kansas. In the end, things turned out as anticipated in Nebraska, while things in Kansas took a turn mm -hmm. for the worst. The North and the South were at odds. Various anti-slavery organizations from the North organized several thousand settlers to move to Kansas and vote to make it into a free state, further creating free state settlements in Lawrence, Manhattan, and Topeka. Meanwhile, as news of the oncoming tide of Northerners reached the ears of the South, thousands of armed Southerners from states such as Missouri, who came to be called Border Rufians, ascended into Kansas in order to turn the vote over towards a pro-slavery congressional delegate. The pro-slavery forces ended up winning the election and hauled in another victory on March 30, 1855, by dominating the first territorial legislature and crowning it in favor of slavery. That newly born pro-slavery legislature would later start passing laws to institutionalize slavery in Kansas and trigger a sequence of violence. May 21, 1856, a group of border ruffians entered the Free State stronghold of Lawrence, where they burned the Free State Hotel, destroyed two printing presses, and ransacked homes and stores. May 22, 1856, Congressman Preston Brooks from South Carolina physically attacked Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts in the Senate's chambers in retaliation for a speech Sumner made that criticized Southerners, including Andrew Butler, for pro-slavery violence in Kansas. These acts, in turn, inspired John Brown to lead a group of men in Kansas territory on an attack at a pro-slavery settlement at Powhatan Creek. The group dragged five pro-slavery men from their homes and hacked them to death with bald swords. These actions are often regarded as the first shots of the Civil War. President Pierce proved to be on the side of pro-slavery legislature and claimed it as a legitimate government of Kansas, further sending troops to disperse of an attempted meeting by the newly formed Free State's shadow government in Topeka. In August, thousands of pro-slavery Southerners formed armies and marched into Kansas. That same month, Brown and several of his followers engaged 300 pro-slavery soldiers in the Battle of Osawatomie. The hostilities raged for another two months until Brown departed Kansas Territory, and a new territorial governor, John W. Geary, took office and managed to prevail upon both sides for peace. This was followed by a fragile peace broken by intermittent violent outbreaks for two more years. The last major outbreak of violence was touched off by the Marais de Cygnus Massacre in 1858, where border ruffians killed five free state men. In all, Approximately 55 people died in bleeding Kansas. Oh. Okay. Let's see what else is on. Hmm. What a nice commercial.
Mr. President, you are now called to redress a grave transgression. Seldom in history of nations has such a question been presented. Tariffs, army bills, navy bills, land bills are important and justly occupy your care. But these all belong to the course of ordinary legislation as means and instruments only. They are necessarily subordinate to the conversation of government itself. Now back to the broadcast. In today's leading issue, we bring to you the ongoing conflict of Bleeding Kansas. A recent event that took place was the brutal beating and harassment of the very prominent and respectable Charles Sumner. All violence began in Congress when Sumner delivered his fiery speech the crime against Kansas, which accused pro-slavery senators, particularly David Atchison and Andrew Butler. In response to his crime against Kansas speech, the very oblivious Sumner was beaten by the well-rounded, strong, and more prominent than Sumner will ever be, Preston Brooks, my hero. So now we bring you with an update, and reporting live from the North Pole is Miss Santa Claus. Good evening, Senator Charles Sumner. Good evening, Neil. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I want to start by retaliating all of the issues that have occurred in which violence has escalated and confrontations have happened. Everyone, including myself, assumed that Nebraska would be a free state and Kansas a slave state. And that brings me to my question of what do you think about the Kansas-Nebraska Act? <clears throat> well... The Kansas-Nebraska Act, in my opinion, will most definitely bring forth controversial issues about slavery since it wants to split Kansas and Nebraska and give popular sovereignty to each. By doing so, Kansas will e inevitably enter the Union as a slave state, an obvious contradiction of the Missouri Compromise. As a pioneer in anti-slavery myself, I see this as a devastating blow from aggressors such as South Carolina Senator Andrew Butler, who is a mistress who, though ugly to others, is always lovely to him, though polluted in the sight of the world, is chaste in his sight.
Hello, Mrs. Pereja. Hmm? Hello, Mr. Brooks. Hello, Mr. Sumner. Yes, I'm the Sumner of anti-slavery. Anti-slavery? Yes, anti-slavery. What are you? I'm pro-slavery. Pro-slavery? So you're not a noob, you're a pro. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yes? Yes. You are a pro. So you're anti-noob, anti-noob slavery. Okay, so we've established the fact that you are, in fact, anti-slavery, whereas she as pro-slavery. But what would we, what we, we would lose, <laughs> be, but what we would like to know as an audience is why that is your stand against slavery and why you are for slavery. Why are you for slavery, Mr. Brooks? Because they're useful tools. Tools. Yes, why, tools. Why must you use such difficult vocabulary? I cannot understand and comprehend the word tool. Why tool? Because that's how I see them. Why? Because they're just a useful part of everyday life. So do you not see them as people? No. So you don't believe they're in not, equality? You do not believe in equality. Were you, are you religious, Mr. Brooks? Yes, I am. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Were you affected by the Second Great Awakening? As you can say. Then, would you say that God created all men equal? Some think so. Aren't slaves humans, men as well? Yes. Slavery is immoral. To you? Well, what do you think then? Do you think you are above them? Yes, I do. And why is that so? Because slaves have... Stop. Beep! I provide slaves with a home, food, clothes, why not? Why so not? ideally, you are the master, and as the master, you are above them. Yes, and they are below you. Yes. So you are sitting on them right now, as we. Sit. Why must you sit on slaves and put them below you then? There are two main controversial issues between us that it, that that's causing conflicts. You understand that, right? Yes. There are slavery and states' rights. And you know, states' rights are just a cover for slavery. Why do you say that? Without slavery, there would be no... Without slavery, there would be no conflict. Are you sure about for that? For states' rights. Yes, I'm hmm. very sure. Okay, well, let's look at it then. What is What are the positive and negatives of having a slave? It is very immoral. It is a sin. To have slaves? To have slaves. Why? Because God created all men equal. Mm -hmm. And putting a slave under you and sitting on them is not making them equal. Well, what if <laughs> they are thriving underneath your guidance? My guidance? Still, that is still they are not equal. Well, Mr. Brooks said earlier that he provides shelter and food for them. And with that, do they do they flourish together? Do they maintain good family lives and be stable? Do they have a home to stay in? Oh, yes, they're given a home to stay in. So you would say they have close family ties. In some cases, yes. So, Mr. Brooks, don't you think that that's one of the one of the positive sides of having slavery? Yeah. I mean, let's say you bring slaves over to the north, and they're surrounded by factories, and they need to work, 
and have to live in horrible living conditions. What would you say about that? I would say that they're still not equal. If we bring slaves to the north, there will... Hmm. Mm. That is a question, isn't it? That is a question. Well, okay, let's skip that and go to the negatives of slavery. What do you think is one bad thing about slavery, Mr. Brooks? <laughs> Mr. Brooks! <laughs> Mr. Brooks will look at you. <laughs> Slaves are very costly. Mm, big investments? Are they worth your money? Yes. Hmm. Saves me a lot of time and speeds up the economy. Hmm, so that's another good thing. What about you, Mr. Brooks? Do you have a bad thing? <laughs> Do you have any negative thoughts about slavery? It is very immoral. You understand that, right? It is a sin. Yes, you've established that it's immoral and a sin, but how so? What's so bad about having slaves? Because God made all men equal. <laughs> so where do you see there being immorality in slaves? What part in their daily lives do you see that in? By subjugating them and putting them under you and sitting on them. What about slave auctions? Slave auctions, they tear apart the lives and families of slaves. But isn't it better for them to be apart so that their Why parents should don't they have be apart? So that their parents so that the parents of the children don't have to see their children suffer. Oh, well, that's a good point right there. What do you think, Mr. Sumner? Well, what do you think about the emotional and after effects of tearing apart a family? Huh? Hmm. How do you think a three-year-old would feel if they lost their mother and their father and they were sent to different states? I assume that he'll feel bad, just like any other normal person, but he'll get over it. So it's kind of a matter of opinion? Sort of. So, Mr. Brooks, anything else you'd like to say? I just want to state out a point that if workers, if slaves are acting as workers in the North, don't you feel that that's an equality too? If slaves are working as work to, workers in factories in the north, don't you feel that that's inequality too? But they have the same jobs as white men. Unlike slaves in the south, who are under white men, who are set on by white men, because <laughs> white men own them. You're saying that slaves as well as white men are both not given equality. Mm. Yes, no. Are you saying that slaves and white men are given equality? They're both not given equality if they're both working in factories. But it um, is equal because slaves and white men are working in the factory together. But white men are also. Should you get that? Don't be right back. <laughs> Do you like my piano play? So, back to our topic, slavery. So, one recent thing that's happened lately is the Kansas Nebraska Act, which was what Mr. Sumner was talking about in his Crime Against Kansas speech. What do you think about his speech? What do you think about my speech, Mr. Brooks? I think that it's more of a matter of opinion. Opinion? Yeah. Why do you say that? Because I view slavery different than you do. How do you view slavery? I view it as it's okay. Why is it okay? Because under the Constitution, under the Fifth Amendment, it says that slaves belong to me and I can do whatever I want with them. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, uh, we'll read. 
Well, Mr. Sumner, many Northerners believe in you as a, as their hero after that speech. I'm their hero. Yet many Southerners believe in Mr. Brooks as their hero. Yes, you are their hero. Northerners believe you are the hero for that speech you gave. And getting beat up. In a way, yes. So, Mr. Brooks here didn't really get a punishment. What do you think about that? I think it is not right. Well, okay, so... What we've established here today is that you are still pro-slavery and you are still anti-slavery. Still, and after have, 15 minutes. Yes, and you have both yet to convince each other otherwise. So what does that say to you guys? Hmm? Do you think there is really a right or wrong answer to this question? I or believe there... that we should have a war. Hmm. Hmm. Fight it out. I agree. I don't believe we should have a war to fight it out, do you? I think we should. Why do you think we should have a war, Mr. Preston Brooks? Senator Preston Brooks. Congressman. Congressman Senator Brooks. Beep. Because if it's divided and nobody can make up their mind, why not fight it out? Why must we resort to violence? Because obviously talking, as you can see, talking, as you can see, is not going to solve it. So, well, we haven't exactly gotten answers here today, but we've gotten more questions. Slavery or no slavery? War or no war? What is your opinion? What is your opinion? Whose side are you on? Rated PG thirteen. Okay, so. Hey, Lao Tao. 没心意，拿走。娘娘，这是肯德基卡拉石锅泡菜堡。嗯、香嫩的卡拉鸡腿肉加上酸辣韩式泡菜，含到底石锅酱，够味。再来一个。啊、肯德基卡拉石锅泡菜堡。So, how are you today? I'm fine. Um, how do you feel about being president? Being president is great. I love America. I love it so much. America! I love America! Okay. Okay. That's great. We love America, everybody. <clears throat> and, um, how did you win the election? I won the election by 180 electoral votes, which I am proud of. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? 180 electoral votes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, what did you do? What did I do? What did I do? What didn't I do? Ask me, did I walk from the north to the south explaining my good... My good, my good poems and speeches and stories and all that good stuff. So you you were very persuasive. I'm very persuasive. I was a lawyer. <clears throat> I was a lawyer. Okay, so um, what led to the succession? What led to the succession was the the white. The withdrawal from the Union of the Southern States in the 1860, which brought on the Civil War. <laughs> so that's how 
the the concentration started. Yes. So, any more questions, Oprah? How did you feel about slavery? How did I feel about slavery? Well, after I won the election, I showed them Southerners that slavery was very, very bad. Very bad. Okay, yes. Did you own any slaves? Did I own any slaves? Did I own a slave car? Of course. Of course, no, I did not own any slaves. Two cars. <clears throat> I did not own any slaves at all. That is bad. I was the first president who who took away slaves. This is a world of condensation. And he who would be no slave must... <laughs> I can lie in the brain. <laughs> To have no slaves, one of my favorite quotes, August 24, 2000, I mean, 1980s, 19, 1860. You know, you know <laughs> I dislike slavery, and you, have you fucking been looking at me? Fully <laughs> admit the abstract using of it. Yes, that's, that's the way I feel of slavery. I feel that it's bad, it's against the Bible, it's against the eyes of God, it's against the eyes of my God, and it's, I mean, the eyes of me, and it's against the eyes of slaves. Yes. <clears throat> wow. Yes. How did you get the idea of abolishing slavery? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sick right now. People think I'm going to die after my term is done, but I am going to be strong and <coughs> make it. I'm just a little bit. Well, I hope you get that. Thank you. Can you read the question again? How did you get the idea of abolishing slavery? Well, I've always <coughs> had the idea of abolishing slavery. But, um, I didn't really, um, got it out until my, pre when I was a, pres a president, when I am a president, I am a president, and then I just got it out, felt what I felt. I am the president. I do what I want to do. So basically, you, before you, President, you were anti-slavery, all right? No, uh, as I said in my quote, I said, if you don't believe in slavery, you don't believe it from now and not from then. <coughs> and, um, yes. people didn't know about this? Well, people had an idea. I didn't want to be out there because I know that I would be at risk. Dying, not dying, dying. <coughs> yes, yes. I say it to you and to the world. And then, when I did come out, I was shot. I was killed in 1865. Which, well, the whole reason I was killed was because I said that slavery was bad. <coughs> Yes. My name is Lincoln Abraham Lincoln. And all because of that, she, he was killed. But I was the 16th president, the first president in America, who abolished slavery. 16th president. Yes. Well, thank you for rescuing my people. You're very welcome, Oprah Winfrey. See, now you're free to buy, drink water, from the water fountain. Yes. Well, that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day.